Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, in our first uh, Kima Core SIG meeting, uh, I will introduce, introduce you to the agenda first. And we have some points here. And the first one, uh, I will talk just a short uh, story about the purpose of that, of that SIG. Uh, then uh, Ralph Hoffman will show us the Kima, uh, Kima vision. Then the next topic uh, will be presented by Łukasz Gornicki, which is the overview of uh, Kema project in GitHub, focusing on our main repositories and how they are organized. Then the next uh, item is the community slot that will be presented by Natasha Blatowicz. That will you will get more and know how the community will uh, work, how how we see it. Then we will discuss shortly about the meeting frequency uh, and uh, we will pick up the solution, how we will vote maybe for, for that. And uh, the next point is that I will show you the proposals overview in our SIG, where they are placed, uh, why we are putting uh, them there and what they are about. And at the end, of course, we'll have uh, questions and feedback uh slot okay then let's uh, today i'm in the moderator of course and uh, mateusz Szostok will take uh, notes and let's just go with uh, the purpose in the kema project organization in the community repository uh, you can uh, find the seek and working groups directory where the first C core is created it's currently the only seek we have in our project to make it simple to have one uh, seek at the beginning that will handle uh, all of the topics of our uh, existing repositories and components. And uh, propose, right, uh, we'll have a public place to uh, represent uh, the Kima. Uh, we'd like to facilitate the collaboration with external contributors, of course, communicate the vision and also the roadmap uh, to the community uh, as well. Uh, represents the Kima uh, contributors and also be the main contact uh, about the contribution for Kima and talk about the feedback from the community and, and just try uh, to add, ensure that it's addressed. Of course, as I said, uh, all, all of the repositories under the organization besides the community uh, belongs to the SIG core. And, uh, yeah, that's about the uh, purpose of the SIG core. Uh, I will just briefly go with uh, some information that are also placed in that um, directory. You can find the Slack channel uh, where you can uh, we can talk about the Kima. And of course, uh, we also uh, prepared the Google group where we will use for the discussions also some announcements about the new versions or bigger changes. Uh, uh, please sign in to that, to that group. Of course, you can also find the uh, open uh, community issues and requests with label C core. Uh, right now, it's right now it's empty, and uh, also the meetings. Yeah, we are using Zoom. Uh, frequency, we'll talk later uh, about, and you can find also the meetings notes and uh, agenda uh, for the next uh, meetings uh, here. About the uh, leaders, we have four leaders right now in that C core, which is me and Mateusz Szostok, uh, Ahmed Abdallah, and Łukasz Gurnicki. And, uh, and that's it about the introduction. Uh, we can go with the next point. Ralph, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So if you guys can hear me, my name is Ralph Hoffman. And I was asked to give you a kind of vision about what we're trying to achieve with Kima. And before we talk about the vision, let me a little bit start with the history about how this whole idea of that project came to life. It's pretty much 18 months ago when we started that idea on um, solving the problem, how we can extend and customize our existing enterprise applications we have out there, which are pretty much based on heterogeneous technology stacks, how we can extend them and customize them and just improve that process because everyone and users have said, okay, it's a complex process to do that. And we said, okay, uh, how can we achieve that to make that a little bit easier and better? And so the main goals at that point in time was to improve that extensibility and customization there 
even to do a, have a kind of out of the box integration with the different applications because customers have been not only complaining and users about customizing different applications because of a lot of requests coming from customers saying, okay, they want to build end to end scenarios, combining multiple applications into multiple business scenarios. So there was a lot of need there how to do that. And that's even getting more complicated in a heterogeneous stack. And then the other thing we we came up there because we had always a kind of ecosystem outside there with customers and partners. Everything we want to do there is pretty much based on open standards. It's based on uh, openness. So everyone in that area can even reuse that stuff and, and use it and even extend it on their own. And finally, we said, okay, we are in the cloud uh, time right now. And we said, okay, everything we are building there, we should do it in a cloud native fashion because we want to have that from a cost efficiency perspective, scalability effect, uh, uh, effective, we want to have that in, in a good shape there. So that was pretty much the motivation when we started there. It's 18 months ago, and it took quite some while to convince people about that project, and it took some POCs and stuff like that till we started that project and then built it the first release of Kima. At that time, it had even another name, and, and it uh, changed a lot there. The other thing I can add there, from the beginning on, we had always the plan to open source schema from the beginning on to say, okay, if we have that partner ecosystem, customer ecosystem there, it would be good to drive adoption and give uh, partners even the um, freedom to say, okay, they can extend that stuff. They can use it for their own purpose. And we have been even thinking customers and partners might even come up with some other extension scenarios we might have never thought about. And why should we limit these guys doing that stuff? And at that time, pretty much open sourcing was put on a timeline saying, okay, we might do that in a year or a little bit later when we have more stable. Then about four months ago, we met some folks from Google and they introduced to us their project, which is called uh, Knative. And Knative at that point in time had even another name. It was pretty much focusing on doing serverless development on top of Kubernetes. And uh, when we have taken a look at that project, a lot of stuff was fitting together with what we're trying to achieve. And then we said, okay, let's align with them and let's work with them. And it was from the beginning on a kind of friendship between the different teams saying, okay, we want to drive that forward together. And these guys are doing their open source announcement in, uh, I think it's right now a month ago or six weeks ago, I'm not quite sure anymore on Cloud Next. And then we said, okay, it would be even our good opportunity to do that with these guys together. And then we said, okay, we just shift our original plan from open sourcing Kima from in a year to uh, a little bit earlier. And then everything changed. And then the plan was set up with um, Knative. And that was even announced on, on Cloud Next then. And um, so we have Kima right now as an open source project, still with the goals we had from the beginning in mind, doing that uh, extensibility and stuff. Like let's give you kind of vision what we are working on. We still have a longer list of features we want to implement, functionality we want to implement, but priority number one on our side is a side that we want to get out with beta there and stuff like that. It's pretty much saying we want to align with the Knative technology there. And that's where we are working on. And the first approach is that we align our messaging infrastructure, what we call the event bus internally in Kima with what Cloud Native is providing there. And our current implementation we are using internally, there is a process and some alignment going on with the Knative community there that we want to contribute that to Knative and it might be an alternative implementation to what Knative is right now uh, providing there um, and might be useful then for customers and stuff like that, what they are using there right now with Kafka. And the overall vision there from driving Kima forward is pretty much that extensibility story, but aside that open source project, what we are planning to do is in the future to offer, to have an offer, their commercial offer for our customers and stuff like that, saying, okay, we want to offer Kima even as a service. And so customer can get Kima even as a managed service from us. And that's pretty much saying, okay, it's based on the open source project, but we are adding some managed service around that. So we take care about managing updates and stuff like that, but it's all based on the open source and everything we are doing there in open source will be fully committed to what we do there in, um, um, the new project there with our service offering. Yeah, that's it pretty much from mouse, my side, what we are doing there. So I can hand over to PK again. I think that would be the next thank, topic. Thank you, Ralph. 
uh, I just want to um, add one more thing uh, that uh, for all of the attendees, I'd like to ask you to go to our uh, uh, Google group and this list yourself with the location because it could help us with uh, making the timing for the next uh, meeting. Okay. Just a short uh, reminder. Uh, Google Doc, uh, sorry. I send the, um, send the link uh, to you. And Wukash, uh, you can continue uh, the presentation with uh, Kimo overview, right? Already? Yes, I can. Just give me a second, I'll start sharing. Please let me know when you can see the, the screen. I already see it. Yeah, I can see already. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, perfect. And also ping me whenever I start sound like robot or whatsoever. Um, so yeah, hi guys, I'm, um, I'm Ukash, one of the SIG leaders and also a product owner working on, on Kima. And I'll just give you a brief introduction to the organization, GitHub organization that we have. So just um, explain you the structure and the most important, how you can contribute to the project. So first things first, uh, the most important and uh, the core of the project uh, real, uh, is in Kima repository. So it's where, um, yeah, without this repo, there's no Kima, by the way. Um, the the next one is the, the console repo. Um, the console repo contains everything related to the um, to the UI that we have in the console uh, in the in the in the Kima, and it's a console UI. So the repo is called console. Both of those repos um, follow a um, monorepo structure. So you're gonna find in Kima a bunch of different components and the same in console, um, you're gonna see a different uh, views um, in one repo. And then the next one is the community. Uh, community repo is something that we um, noticed um, the Kubernetes community is doing. So it's a place for you guys for, so you can learn um, how you can contribute, how to join Kima community, how to work together with us on a project. Um, so everything is there like the SIG description that uh, PK showed, uh, Piotr showed at the beginning. Then test infra is also something that uh, we follow from the other communities. Uh, you know, it's probably from Istio or, or Kubernetes. So that's a place where we will keep all the CI configurations. Then the examples is a place for, of course, a code that showcases um, some functionalities of Kima. And website is a source code for our um, Kima project IO page, where you should always land as a first place to learn about Kima. And last but not least, uh, it's also important to notice Luigi repository. So it's a, a place where we have sources for um, our microphone framework that we uh, will use in um, console UI in Kima um, to orchestrate the, in the UI and to um, bring extensibility to the UI. And most important info, why it's separated, why it's not in console or Kima. So um, it's worth to go there into the repo, read about it. So the thing about Luigi is that um, it can run uh, also without Kima. So it's not really dependent on Kima. You can use it without Kima as well. Um, so that's if it comes to the basic structure of those seven repos, then the most important ones for the contribution is um, is Kima. So let me just go a little bit into details of the structure of this monorepo. So it cons consists of three of the most important parts. So um, the the Go code, the, the whole code uh, for our controllers, operators, and everything um, that makes Kima running and uh, useful. So it's a components uh, directory. Then also we have all the acceptance tests that we use for testing um, um, Kima cluster and the whole functionality uh, is also located here um, if it comes to the contributions. And then the resources directory also contains all the Helm charts um, that we use uh, to deploy all those components 
into the Kubernetes cluster to make Kima functional. Then if it comes to second most important repo for the contributions is um, the console one. What's important to notice about it is um, that it, one thing, what I mentioned already, it's monorepo, but uh, what you should know is that it's, um, we use two different technologies uh, to provide views. So it's Angular and React. So some of the components um, are in Angular, some on, in React, but we also uh, started doing the approach that we um, don't want to duplicate the components, but also in the components directory, you're gonna notice that we uh, started providing a generic components that can be reused across views. So that's a place where you can contribute if it comes to the UI of Kima. Now, yeah, the most important thing, so how to contribute? Of course, like in any other um, GitHub project, um, always the main entry for the contribution is the contribution MD. So I'm not gonna show you the file because um, you can check it on your own later. Uh, the most important, I want to point you out the, um, the locations where to contribute. So if it comes to the content contribution, so you know um, that you can uh, specify something more or you noticed a bug in documentation, uh, the sources of the um, of the documentation are stored in Kima repository in docs directory. So the whole documentation that you can normally see here on Kima project IO docs page, uh, that's all taken from Markdown from here. So whenever you want to contribute um, to those Markdown files, so just feel free to do that. Then if it comes to the backend, the whole Go code, as I mentioned, it's it's Kima. So just go to Kima repo. Uh, we have a pretty clear uh, development guide in place that you can uh, quickly start um, Kima as a developer and uh, contribute to the code. Uh, for the console, that's the same. Uh, we also made sure that the even though we have different views uh, in different technologies, uh, we managed to configure everything with um, one of the really cool tools called Lerna and to make a development environment also um, kind of unique for any technology. So um, also go to console and read the development guide. And um, there are two also important things you should know as a contributor. Um, and we are of course aware of those two things and we are addressing them. One is as a contributor, obviously you want to make sure that your pull request is um, tested against our um, CI. At the moment, we are still having a um, CI kind of hidden from you. We did not yet move to Prow, um, and we still have our internal CI. So just please keep in mind that if you want to contribute to the code at the moment, whenever you raise a pull request, um, just um, yeah, be patient, wait for one of us to run CI for you um, to make sure um, that the PR is checked against the tests that we defined. And of course, if um, you don't want to wait and be more proactive, just of course, go to Slack channel that we have, talk to us, um, ping us uh, to speed up the process. The other part that you should also be aware and we should be totally honest with you, is that when you go into the, for example, Kima, but it's the same with console, and you go into the development section and you learn how to quickly develop um, something, uh, some of the components that run in Kima to contribute to the code, at some point of time, you're gonna notice that um, it's not so easy to contribute to each of the component uh, because we were not able uh, to provide a clear uh, development guides for all the components. Uh, we are aware of that and we are also addressing that part. So just please be patient, um, uh, just look on our Slack channel, you're gonna notice that we're pretty quickly responsive. Um, so whenever you want to contribute uh, to a specific component, feel free to, uh, to ping us on Slack. Uh, I'm sure that any of Kima developer will, um, will be glad to um, join you with your contribution and explain you the basic structure of a given component so it's easier for you to make a first contribution. And last but not least, Contribution is not only documentation and code, it's also um, issues where you can report um, bugs and also give an ideas for some enhancements. 
So uh, just be aware, we're using GitHub issues fully at the moment. So just go to Kima project, raise an issue. And if you want to see more information about who's delivering a given feature, if it's addressed and processed, um, um, be aware that we're using ZenHub to kind of, um, let's say, enhance the GitHub issues functionality. So just install ZenHub plugin, then you're gonna see a much more sophisticated uh, details of a given issue, uh, in which backlog it landed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, um, I guess that's all from my side. Thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you, Lukasz. Uh, okay, then it's time uh, to uh, that Natasha will introduce us to the Kima community. We'd like to. Uh, have a, such a slot every uh, SIG meeting. Natasha, stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Piotr. Um, I hope you can hear me. So uh, just very shortly about the Kima community because uh, we, we had a lot of uh, explanation also now from uh, uh, Piotr, Ralph and uh, Lukas so far. So every of the SIG core meetings, uh, we will have a slot related to the governance of uh, Kima and Kima community. So every time if you have um, any question um, related to how do I create an issue, what is the release process, um, how do I report a bug, uh, where do I report a bug, even though it has been explained, please either delve into the community repository, into the documentation, everything is there, or uh, simply um, send us a question on Slack. Also, we would like uh, to invite you to follow us on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn, uh, visit the website for some more news or blog posts too, and tweet about Kima. Tell us about your experiences. Uh, what were your experience with Kima? Where do you have problems? What are your ideas of uh, using or reusing Kima? And that would be great support for all of us. We are happy to work with you guys um, further on on the getting Kima better as an open source product. So that's it from me. If you have any questions just uh, in future for SIG Core, for our community, then just add them to the agenda on the public group. We, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Okay, then the next point is um, about our um, meeting. Uh, when it will happen in the future. And uh, we'd like to um, uh, offer that it would be on Wednesday, as it is today, uh, but uh, we'll, we'd like to start with uh, 3 p.m., uh, the Europe time, and do that uh, at the beginning be weekly. And uh, that's also the reason we, we asked you uh, to, to provide that information from which locations uh, uh, you are because uh, we can analyze it, we can even uh, then think about the pool uh, in our Slack channel or in our uh, group that we can, of course, uh, change it. Uh, for now, I guess the three uh, next meetings will, will be in the biweekly uh, matter, uh, matter. And uh, that's the, the information about that thing. And I will, uh, I'd like to show you the next uh, item, which is, uh, our uh, proposals. Then uh, let's back to the C core uh, directory, uh, where you can find uh, two uh, subdirectories, proposals and decisions. About the decisions, we are really the outcome of uh, proposals. We will talk about that in the next C uh, core meeting. Re let's right now focus on the proposals itself. Uh, that's the place uh, where uh, we uh, can uh, provide some smaller or bigger proposals about the, some improvements about some components or even bigger stories that are really related to many components. And uh, I just want to show you one of them, which is uh, modularization. And uh, we, have, we will also uh, provide uh, soon or later the template, uh, I guess, for the proposals that we can see who really uh, was uh, working about that proposal. Uh, was the status uh, that it's uh, proposed or accepted and about the acts, uh, acceptance, act, uh, acceptation. We will talk later about the decision uh, records in the next meeting. And then you can find uh, some motivation that in that case, we want to make him more uh, modular. That means we can uh, skip installation of some of the components. 
where you can find the goal, the current situation, and the proposal itself. And in case of that one, it's really, uh, and as an outcome of that one, we really need to provide some sub proposals for uh, other components that needs to provide the modularization as well. Then uh, I'd like to ask you to just look uh, into those proposals we have right now. Uh, please leave uh, the um, uh, feedback and also uh, you're welcome to, to contribute. Then that's it from my side about the proposals and it's time for the, Q&A uh, session, then I guess we can start it. If you have any questions or uh, suggestions, please just talk now. Or you want to share that, do you like the meeting uh, structure or you would like to propose or offer some changes? <laughs> I have a question, uh, Piotr Bochinski is here, and uh, the question about the proposal. So uh, you showed that the proposal already there. Uh, what uh, kind of channel uh, you prefer to use for feedback for that proposals? I guess uh, uh, we can use many channels, right? Uh, of course, uh, the Slack itself, uh, we have a SIG core uh, Slack channel where we can always talk about them. Uh, we can use uh -huh. the um, Google uh, Docs where we can start uh, bigger discussions, maybe more focused on that topic. And of course, when the new proposals arrive, they are also under the pull requests and we can mm -hmm. even leave the comments yeah. inside the pull yeah, my, my, my question was all about this merged uh, pull, uh, pull, uh, proposals that don't have uh, pull requests. From my point of view, those two channels, the Slack and uh, Google Docs. Thank you. Uh, Google Groups, right? Not Google Docs. Uh, Google Groups, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mixing it, sorry. And for, for, for new ones, usually you'll start with a pull request and um, send that, uh, that includes the proposal and decision, and send it on the mailing list at the start. And um, yeah, uh, preferably uh, the final um, state of the proposal is the pull request itself, uh, have the discussion there maybe, but you can also have discussions on the Slack channel or on the mailing list. Yeah, and in general, one of the next meetings, we will um, in detail talk about decision making and the governance model and the proposals. Yeah, Thank that's you. all. Okay, maybe into addition what uh, Wukash was presenting us about the Kema, you can of course try it by your own. Uh, you can, uh, I don't remember if uh, Wukash mentioned that, that you can uh, uh, install the Kema locally on the Minikube cluster. Then you can uh, feel it, uh, how it works and uh, you can really get more feelings about what's that about. We also provide the local UI with uh, accessible um, almost one-to-one -one with the CLI API. Then feel free to, to try it. Okay. If we don't have any more questions besides PB, <laughs> I guess uh, I'd like to thank you that you participate in our meeting and see you in the next two weeks. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.